I've always had a troubled relationship with film photography. I've come at it many times over the years, but I'm often not able to justify the extra cost of shooting on film. Plus, to be very honest, I get kind of tired of hearing people say, film has so much soul to it and digital is so soulless. And this is usually from people who I guarantee couldn't tell you in a blind test the difference between an image shot on film or a digital image that's pushed through something like Visco. But recently I've got back into film photography and I have to say I'm really enjoying it. And I didn't do it so that I could harken back to some golden era of photography or recapture the woo of true photography. It's nothing to do with that. I just felt like the process itself might have something to teach me. I'm sure I'll talk about what I'm doing more in the future. I'm hoping to shoot film for a specific project and so I'm doing a lot of testing around that at the moment and I'm getting into developing my own film and I'm happy to share all that stuff with you as well over time. But right now, as I'm learning, it's been really important to seek out other photographers who shoot on film as a preference to work out their hows and whys. So that's why in this video I want to introduce you to one of the photographers who reminds me why film is still important to shoot in 2019 amidst the race for more megapixels and fancier autofocus systems. And unlike a lot of other photographers, she doesn't shout about the fact that she shoots on film. She doesn't wear it like a badge of honor or ask you to look at her images more generously because they're shot on film. In fact, on her Instagram, she often doesn't mention how or what she shot those images with. I just happen to know it's mostly on film. And her images stand strongly on their own two feet. She never suggests she's a better photographer than everyone else because she shoots on film. And she doesn't make speeches about how her work is imbued with oodles of soul because she chooses to shoot that way. In fact, if you ask her why she shoots on film, she will quietly tell you that it's because she finds the process itself so satisfying. And taking on that process as a street photographer is hugely admirable to me. I mean, to be very honest, I don't have a great hit rate as a street photographer. I might go out for two to three hours, shoot 50 to 70 images, and maybe only come home with two or three keepers. When you translate that into buying rolls of film and chemicals and then the time you have to spend to develop each roll, to dry the negatives, to scan them in and process them, you realize it's a huge investment into the process. Whereas digital photographers like myself can be a bit more blasé in the way we shoot, I think people who shoot street on film really earn every image. So in the spirit of introducing you to other photographers who work very differently to me, but I know I have a lot to learn from, I'm gonna shut up now and introduce you to my friend, Mavis. When I was a kid, I remembered my mom used to carry her point and shoot film camera and a bag of films whenever she traveled. I remember once when we went on holiday to Japan and it was during the cherry blossom season. And I still remember the scene of um, all the pink petals falling down across the river and there are lots of people uh, having picnic underneath the trees. And it was such a beautiful scene. I remember seeing those photos after we got back and then it brought back many um, happy memories. So when I was in 13, I went to Australia for a month. And that was the first time I actually held a film camera. And then by remembering um, my mom loading, into, uh, loading the films into her film camera. It gave me um, sort of excitement, wanting to try it myself. And I remember the first time how nervous I was loading, you know, this precious roll of film. I had to be quite careful each time I took a photo. So I, um, I took my time um, taking the shots. After I got back, I was really excited to collect the photos from the lab. I remember, 
you know, when I look through the photos, how、um, happy I was going through all the memories.、Um, you know, I captured a year and a half ago. I bought this camera, Leica M6, It's completely manual. So I have to set set everything up before I shoot. There's no aperture priority. There's no autofocus. So normally on a sunny day, I will set it at f11 and then、uh, 500 shutter speed. So I don't have to worry about、um, the camera setting、uh, when I'm working. I can just focus on. The scene and everything that happens around me. I only use one focal length, so this is a 35 millimeter lens. Because I shoot street,、um, everything just happens so quickly, and so I wanted something that I'm familiar with. I don't. I wouldn't have to worry about anything else. And when when I spot something, I can just raise up my camera and then take the shots. So normally I will use zone focus.、Um, I normally set it at two meters.、Um, so I know like my、uh, a subject who about two meters away、um, would be in focus. If Things are happening a little bit further away. Then I'll quickly, you know, change my my distance to let's say five meters or so. When the subject enters into sort of my zone, two three meters zone, and I'll sort of just do this, and then I hold my camera for a little. Few more seconds after the subject's gone past me, the person wouldn't think I'm taking a photo of them, so I wouldn't be disturbing them in a way. They will think I'm just like a tourist taking photos of something in the background. I shoot with Kodak TriX 400 because it's got a really nice look and it's great quality and it's got rich history. And also,、um, it can cover a wide dynamic range of different light conditions.、Um, you can shoot at box speed four hundred, or you you can push it to sixteen hundred or even more.、Um, the reason why I push my、uh, tracks to six sixteen hundred is because I want to keep my work consistent, and also I love that high contrast. Look in my work, and there's lots of grains,、um, and also like if I didn't finish、um, a roll of film during the daylight, I know I can still continue shooting、um, at night. The reason why I shoot this way is because Triax has got、um, a wide dynamic range, so. During a sunny day,、um, I can just set it f11、um, shutter speed at 500, so I get that really nice deep depth of field, and I can freeze the moment, so I don't have to worry about the settings, and、um, I can just focus on the things happening around me, and really taking in the world.
Gary Winogrand is a great in inspiration to me because he used to shoot triax. Not every single photo of his was com is completely straight. And when you look into the details of his work, you can see a sense of movement and life in each of his photographs. And another inspiration to me is Joe Myritz. Um, he also shoots 35 millimeter. His style is to include many characters in his frame. One of the things his work was about was to capture the time and space. For example, he had a body of work from New York during a certain period. And that inspired me wanting to do the same for London, for example, 2019, 2020. For example, there are a bunch of protests going on in London, like the Brexit um, Extinction Rebellion. Um, I wanted to document um, these historical moments happening in 2019 so that people from the future will be able to see the events, the history from this period. When I'm shooting street, um, I normally look for people um, with stories on their face. That sort of um, really draws my attention. It's like um, they are on their own personal journey and then I don't know how their journey will end. And the image will then allow you to fill in your own story to fill the gap. For example, recently I um, went to Paris and I was going out and it was sunny. All of a sudden, it, there comes this really heavy pouring rain. And then I saw this couple holding umbrella, looking quite smart, waiting to cross uh, over the road. And I just saw all this heavy rain catching the sunshine and then them walk like uh, crossing the road. I don't know where they're going. Maybe they're going out for lunch. Maybe they're um, heading home to stay away from the rain. Um, the point is, it doesn't tell you the full story. It allows you to um, wonder and feel it, apply your own story when you look at my photo. I also look for um, people or scene that, will, that I have a deep personal connection to it. I was in New York. It was really late at night and um, I never came across such heavy pouring rain ever in my life. Um, all my clothes were soaked. I chose to stay and shoot when everybody decided to, you know, um, run home. The scene with the heavy rain um, sort of um, made me want to, you know, reflect sort of like a sad, dark moment um, that happened in the past. And I want to express that um, through my lens. Night scene with heavy rain and just a solo, single person walking. Um, they're not even running away from the rain. And I sort of could just really um, connect it to that on a personal level. Sometimes I look for abstract. I remember once when I was walking through Soho at night and there was this window um, I really drew my attention. So I sort of just stood outside the shop for like two minutes, just observing what's going on inside. And then all of a sudden, 
there was well there was an Asian couple sitting um, by the window, and then the the girls started writing. You can see her finger moving, and then she started writing L O V E, and I just caught the moment. Quite often, I look for funny moments on the street.、Uh, like once, I was in New York、uh, in the financial district, and there were five construction workers、um, sitting on the wall having、uh, their lunch, and.、Um, I saw this, you know,、uh, the sunlight was sort of on top, and then with their shadows, with the shadows of their legs underneath their legs, and it looked like they had very heavy, long legs. <laughs> and some people told me that they looked like they're on stilts. Many people think shooting film is a crazy idea. It's expensive. It's just not as easy as you get from the digital cameras. But I get this greater sense of fulfillment when I catch the moment with my film camera. I love loading the actual films into my camera. And、um, you know, going out really enjoy the moments on the street, capturing it, and then bring them home. I just can't wait to see what I got from the day. So I'll just crack open the canister in my changing bag and load them into my Patterson tank. Pulling the chemicals, do the development, and the moment when when I pull the negatives out of the spool and look through whilst it's drying, I get butterflies <laughs> in my tummy, and especially when I got the shot when when I. Took a series of、uh, photos in New York, with the steam coming,、um, with the badly steam. When I saw that photo, I almost screamed out with joy. <laughs> so it's not just saving money, but also I get the full control of the process, and that is my favorite part、um, of the whole thing. You know, finally seeing my images. So I'm not suggesting、um, I'm shooting for film. Therefore, I take better photos than you.、Um, to me, it's the process、um, of shooting film that I really enjoy. There's lots, of, lots more involved to get that image,、um, and I feel more fulfilled. I've only been doing this for a year and a half. I'm still at the start of my journey.、Um, I'm still learning and experiencing new things、um, along the way, and there will no doubt be course cor corrections whilst I'm going. But I'm open to whatever that might lead me.、Um, the most important thing to me is to keep shooting. Keep producing, keep growing、um, the body of work that I'm proud of.